I'm Mark Fowley, and I have a new podcast where I spot, assess, and have coffee with spies, operators, and agents over stories of action, diplomacy, and intrigue. Check it out at markvalley.com. It's the live drop. This is Mitchell. This is Jay Moore. This is Greg Proops. This is Gabby Reese. This is Nate Boyer. This is Hilliard Guest. This is Nathan East. This is Rob Bell. This is J.R. Robinson. This is Dan Stone. This is Dr. Bob Cooper. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, I'm Mark Valley. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. <laughs> this is Johnny Walker, author of Good Team Johnny Walker, and listening to Breakdown Show. And now, the Break It Down Show with John Leon Guerrero, Mark Valley, and Pete A. Turner. Does it get any better than that? My man, Johnny Walker, on the mic. Thanks for sitting down with us, man. Thank you guys for inviting me. Yeah, it's always fun. We're sitting here in Escondido having some coffees in the sun. Amazing sun. weather. Yeah. Yeah. At about, what, gosh, more than 10 years now, man. Yeah. It's a long time. Since we uh, ran around Mazul together like idiots and did a bunch of crazy Not stuff. idiot. We have something to believe in our heart, you know, something... We think we can make change until fucking Obama show up, you know, <laughs> and destroy everything. So yeah, how do, do you keep in touch with folks from home at all? Kind of, uh, only the close, close relative, like family and cousins. How is everybody? Because you're from Missoula, there's a lot of fighting up there. It's fighting is done. It's done now. Well, but there is half of the city is gone too. Yeah, Nineveh also, right? Yeah, did it like when we go mm-hmm. to look at a store? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, it's all gone. All the main street mm-hmm. has become history. Wow. Are they going to rebuild it? <laughs> yeah. Or clear it? <laughs> or just leave they it? Can, they have big, mega, giant money budget for building. Right. But they give it to the corrupt people, and they will bullshit. You're not going to build a nice mall like with Dick Sports, Target. <laughs> You're not going to build Big something like this. The uh, the plan is make politic people richer, right? And after that, maybe they can build something. Is that why you decided to come here? Uh, actually, it's different reason. Like at the beginning, when I work with military police, it's fun and money, no more, no less, because there is no Qaeda, there is no insurgent, nothing. And kind of to be proud to work with Americans because it's matched my dream when I play basketball, listen to country music, and American people, they walk in my city. So it's kind of like an intersection a dream for me. Mm-hmm. So this is at the beginning, but when I moved, moved to the Seals, probably things is different. Like all the... My vision, my understanding about working with Americans is different because those guys, they start capturing bad guys, savages in my city without I know. So kind of I feel uh, shameful because it's my city and I have no idea. And those people, they came thousand miles and I, I thought I'm a smart ass guy, but SEALs, they prove it to me, you know, I'm fucking stupid. So anyway... So work with them and try my things change from money and fun and match of dream work with Americans to warrior believe, like how I can save my country, how I can save my innocent people, because I know those people, if they run the show, they will destroy it. And here we go. Look at you. Half of the country is destroyed by ISS. Half of the other half run by militia and corrupt government. So the answer for your question is, I work with them at the beginning. I didn't want to come to the United States. I want to stay in Iraq because it's my country and I sacrifice a lot of me and my family, my tribe to make it better. And until one of the days I head back to from Baghdad to Mosul where I live, for vacation, and don't think when I have a vacation, I'm going to take my family to Disneyland or Las Vegas. No, we can stay on the house, stand by if someone fucking attack us. So it stays one week, two weeks, whatever. So one of the time I look at to my kids, and 
they barely have nothing to do, no life, only the toys and food inside the house, and that's it. They cannot go shopping. They cannot go to the shop next door. No school, nothing. So no, wi- so no Wi-Fi? No Wi-Fi. In that time? <laughs> yeah. We're wondering about if we can live another day. So the wi- wi- wi-fi, Wi-Fi is not one of our majority requests. So anyway, I head back and I told Tushin, he's retired now. He, his name Tots in my book. I told him, bro, I need to fucking move my family. I'm done. And why I move to this country. I, this is going to be a really interesting interview. Yeah. He doesn't fuck around. <laughs> he gets right into yeah. the... the I, I guess I, I wanted to just... This is something later. But when you say like you went back to Missoula with your family and just more or less prepared for the worst on vacation, what were what was the... What kind of plan did you, did you have? I mean, were your, how old were your children? And did, would, they, would they have used, had to use weapons or did you have a plan of escape? What, what did, how did you, how do you prepare a family for something like that? So, in our tradition, we cannot escape. Maybe I will let my family, my kids escape, but I cannot because I'm going to be pussy and disrespectful in my community and my tribe. And I belong to warrior's tribe. Like in 17th century, 18th century, they have big fight against... They are small tribes, don't get me wrong. But they have big strike for Ottoman Empire. And they stolen a lot of weapons and shit. So anyway, so as part of my honor, I cannot what was your tribe? escape. It's called Muhammad. Muhammad? Yeah, Muhammad. Yeah. So anyway, and it's a funny story. So in... In Ottoman Empire time, because they just want to make my tribe friendly for them. So what they do, they told my grand-grandfather, hey, we can give you a lot of money and make your own army. And we want you just to protect our camps from thieves and gang and another tribe to invade us. And he took the job. And he made good money. Really? Did they fight against the Bedouins in Lawrence, Arabia? Attacked across the oh, this at far, Aqua? This, this, is far, this is far away from us. Oh, far away. We from talk guys. about most of the area, right? Yeah. So it was a tribe of a tribe. So that's part of your. Is that unusual in, in, in Iraq for for someone to have their identity go back a couple, two or three centuries, or to be able to talk about it? I mean, in America, we say, "Oh, I'm part Irish." Whatever. That's the end of it. Is uh, you have to know your family tree. Really? If it's not, you're going to be a pastor and deserve no respect on the community. So you have to have your dad, your grandfather, your grand-grandfather, moms, all your tribe names and activity and story about... Because before, like before 1950, most of the Iraqi people, they are uneducated and they transfer a story by memorize the stories, it's not or, by writing the book or yeah. something, you know. But after 1950, you know, all the revolution, revolution uh, education in Iraq, most of the people, they start writing, they start, like, memorize things, they save history, yeah. That's pretty fascinating. There's how many tribes are in Iraq? Thousands, right? A lot, but yeah. there is, like, major big tribe. Like Shammar mm-hmm. and Abed and Jibur, Glim, like five, six major tribe and small tribe came from those major tribes. Make sense? Yeah. I and mean, then so if your tribe becomes known as thieves, is there changing that? There is no thieves at that time. Because that, a- that time, tribe invade another tribe and they took everything. And they don't call it thief. They call it like a brave guy invite another, invade another uh, tribe. Right. And they took Ghanaim. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now we call it thief. Yeah. If you had another house and took fucking money or something, they call you thief. Back in the days, there is no house. There is tent. And they move from time to time because the sheep, they are, you know, they are sheepers. And also they are, they have like army on the tribe, mm. army dudes, they can invade another tribe. 
So one thing I was reading about like Native American tribes, and this is a much different time period, but Native American tribes, uh, traditionally they, they used to send what like raiding parties. I think that's what you're talking about. Like the, the warriors of the tribe would go and fight, yeah. but they wouldn't send a large group and they wouldn't necessarily send them there for the purpose of exterminating the other tribe. They would just fight for domination or for a, for a, for a specific a specific piece of land or a specific so there wasn't like a, there wasn't like a, a large whole scale war of annihilation going on. It's a different reason in Arabic tradition tribe. One of the reason for food or for water, right? Because you know we don't have oh, water. This is everywhere. my well, Omar Sharif in the movie. Yeah. yeah. So water, food, sheep, camels. Uh, women's money or honor. So, and are those di- different for? Um, is your tribe separate from whether you have a Sunni or a Shia no. lineage? No, we don't have separate. We have people in the same tribe. They are Sunni and they are Shia. Oh wow! And they live together. in the same tribe. They live together. This is before. Not now. This is before. So before your tribe was a stronger, stronger indicator of your identity. So this is how I can explain the tribe shit. Every time tribes start run the show in any country, that's mean the government, government breaks down, breaks down, and the law enforcement very low. That's why the tribe they show up on the surf and they start run the show. It's like organized crime in Sicily yeah. or something like yeah. that. So same thing. After 1950 and 1960, when start the government run everything, the tribe terms became very weak. All right. Barely nothing to do because everything run by the law. Mm-hmm. Like if you if you take something from someone, they can send you the court. If you fight, they can send you the court. If you kill someone, they can send you the court. So everything run by law. After 2003. One of the biggest American policy in Iraq when they released the army and everything, all the government, all the department, thank you, tribe starts showing up again because all everyone, right. like ev- like me, I want to protect my family and also I want to protect my cousin. Also, I want to protect my uncles. I want to protect my tribe. You know what I mean? So this kind of things start showing up after 2003. Did you ever face an instance where you had to turn your back on somebody in your, in your own tribe or or work against them? Any uh, co-belligerents from your own tribe? You mean you mean when I worked with Americans or before? Either. Before, yeah. I mean, you can fight your cousin or something, but sure. they can make a deal and agreement and shake hand and everything goes until unless there is like blood. Like you kill someone, they have to kill you or send you to the jail or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's revenge, another revenge. Yeah, yeah. But after when I work with Americans, yeah, we capture a lot of people from my tribe. They are bad guys. Fuck them. When you guys would go out and do raids and bring people in, how do you know, as a citizen of Mosul that the person that you're going after is bad. If you don't know these people, your trust is towards the SEALs or towards the MPs or whatever. How do you how do you know that they're right and so, they're not got it wrong? Because I know we got it wrong a lot yeah, as Americans. Yeah. With with MPs, we didn't do a lot of heads. Uh-huh. Maybe several. Yeah. But with SEALs every day. So at the beginning, I have no idea. Because it's new things to me and seals with beer, different weapons, all these kind of things. And make me think like, holy shit, what the fuck is going on? What I'm right. going to end up with? So, so I, when I, like I told you at the beginning, when my things change from fun and money to something believe to clean my country, I start so hard to understand every movement of the SEALs and train myself to have the right skills when we go and hit the target, find the jackpot. And as you know, most of the time, 
we can attack in the phone or we have the names. Yeah. And that's all the formation. You know the deal. Yeah. That's all the formation we have. So you have to be smart enough, first of all, to trust your feeling and trust the evidence inside the target. So is multiple tools to find the bad guys. And I'm not exaggerate about myself, but I think 98% from the mission, we catch only the bad guys. And if we catch anyone by an accident, we release them. We have no problem with any innocent people. Well, it sounds like from what I've looked up is the SEALs definitely accepted you into their tribe. Yep. Yep. And this is not came from nothing. Like first time when I work with them, like I told you, I have no idea who's those guys and what I'm going to end up with by working with them. But day after day, I feel I need to enjoy those people. Those people that are warrior. Those people, it's kind of challenging myself. Like those people, they do amazing things. They catch bad guys. And but they were your, they were your tribe in a way. Say again? They were your tribe in a way. The warrior tribe. Me? Yeah, uh, in a the way. The SEALs were your tribe. They're warriors. Yeah, yeah. And every day, I don't know, they test me. But every day, I work with uh, Pete and he know me. I don't act. I just do what I feel is right, you know. So one time I found the EXO ID. Oh, a what? The, the EXO. ID? Yeah. It's uh, military ID. Oh, the EXO is military yeah. ID. And at that time in 2003, it's fucking big deal. I can fucking go anywhere, in any pace, by this ID. And I went to him and I give it to him. Another time I found a handled box and I give it to them. So I don't know, and they do a lot of background checks, seals, everything. And one of the mission we had the target, and I have no weapons with me. And we went inside the target, and at that time I remember we want to protect the voter mm -hmm. for the election, and we need to, we pick up a house. It's kind of give us good coverage. So anyway, we went inside and we start have gunfire from inside. And one of the guys, he get head. And I remember fucking one of the guy, his name, tall guy, I forget. He have the machine gun and he fucking shooting inside the house. And those guys, they shoot from inside and he just hit for the fucking round. And I saw the guys and I hear him. I get head. I get head. His name, Adam. So it's like, fuck what I should do. I have no weapon, nothing. I try to save him, but I don't want to miss with SEALs procedure because I don't know. Oh, so you weren't hit. This Adam was hit. Adam hit. Ad Adam hit. Saying, okay. In his, in his, in his hand. Right. And I want to do something, but I don't want to make something wrong and make it worse. Right. But I wait like a minute and there is nothing. It's like, fuck it. The guys, they couldn't cover him. So I went and I... Grab him from the gunfire zone to save a place. So when we head back, we have Kelvin Spencer. He's retired. That's why I mentioned his name too. He don't trust American in different branch oh, to be sure. on the seal. Yeah. So imagine he can trust Iraqi. Right. So he says... We have debrief, and he says, guys, I trust this guy. So from that time, we start building our trust relationship. Taco, he start giving me gun when we go civilian mission. And, you know, step by step, I became part of the team. Who gave you the team. gun? Taco. Taco, okay. Yeah. Right. Well, didn't Chris Kyle say that you were the only Iraqi that he would give a yeah. weapon to? Yeah. yeah. I also want to point this out, too, for the audience, because they don't know. You were hired to be an interpreter. Yeah. I mean, you know you, that. Yeah, I know that. You saw my paper. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. No, I, I know. You got hired to be an interpreter. So when you're standing there, are there other interpreters on this patrol when Adam got shot? No, I am the only one. But it's often there's other interpreters on, on a patrol when you're out there. I mean, 
one or two other ones sometimes. And with the army, yes. Yeah. yeah. And how many times have you seen other interpreters act the way you act? Where they jump into a firefight and that kind of thing? I don't know. I didn't see in my eyes, but I hear there is a lot of interpreter. They did an amazing job, and they do everything good. But what I'm saying, it's uncommon for you to graduate from being an interpreter. I leave, to that, yeah. I leave that to the SEALs and other people. I cannot right. evaluate myself. Yeah, but your Compared actions. to another term. Right, yeah, yeah. Your actions do that, though. So it's okay for an interpreter to avoid all of those things and simply to interpret. So my goal is... You know that when I work with you. Yeah, but the audience doesn't know. That's what we're going to do. I know. You know, uh, can I interrupt you guys yeah, for a sec? Yeah, do it. Um, I've known Pete. You can ask what, what we did. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't like, because uh, Pete, I've known you for almost a year now. Can I have? Yeah, I just, I've just known Pete for a year. Met him in Los Angeles. He knows a lot about podcasts. He knows a lot of people. He's a, he's a great interviewer. You know, really knows how to kind of you know, hand, handle a subject, <laughs> more or less. <laughs> and uh, really intelligent guy. Maybe you can tell me what, he, what, what Pete was like. When, when you met him, you can just describe him for me. Not fat. No what? <laughs> Not fat. <laughs> Not fat. <laughs> oh my god! And that pretty much. So says this you. is this is every time. Compare him to other Americans. Every time that, when a, compared when to other Americans that you met, you know. You mean. Like Pete, Jack in the Box people? No, Pete. Like uh, no, like, not. I mean, like I'm. I'm. So I will. Else, you know what I mean? I will if you give me time. Every time when I remember Pete, this is how I remember him. He's the one yeah. who support me and give me money to buy weapons to save my ass. Right. And that time when my brother, he killed, I have no one. Because like I told you at the beginning when I worked with military police and SEALs, before I moved to the SEALs, when you work with Americans, you can be proud to work with Americans. But after two years is kind of became a traitor to your own country if you work with Americans. This is how the Qaeda built the environment against Americans and everyone helped them. Make sense? Yeah, they just shame you. Yeah. At the beginning when I worked with military police, SEALs, and I met Pete, he's normal people, humble. He, I don't know what kind of job he have. I thought he's CIA because he has civilian and he have fucking the MP5. Yeah. Right? And he had big argument with fucking big ass army guy about his weapon and he give that guy fucking hard time. We hang on one time in Bellagio. He hit his friend because he act like douchebag. He came to me and he asked him, hey, you cannot hit me this and that. All right. And he had him. So it looked like <laughs> small things fucking make perfect picture match to me with Pete. Sure. <laughs> and we went with civilian car to the Hawk, north of Iraq. That's right. And the police stopped us. Uh, Pete, he did not nervous or shake because in that time maybe we were losing our life when yeah. the Iraqi checkpoint stopped us. And they check our IDs, and they know we're Americans, and they tell us to stand by, this and that. It's like, holy shit, bro, stand by. He said, yeah, I'm in, Johnny. And it looks like maybe this is one of the things, like when I work with him, long time enough, it looks like I have fucking skills, schools. So when I work with SEALs, I milled easily with them. So maybe one of the reasons why I succeed in my job, as whatever it was, my job with the SEALs, Pete. It's Pete. Yeah. Thank you so much. You know, it's interesting. You talk about, you know, what kind of gun you were, Pete was carrying, and you, know, you got an argument in a bar. No, you know, no, not in the bar. At the chow. He the the chow. Oh, the chow. <laughs> yeah, you cannot change my story, buddy. He gets <laughs> arguments I'm just going to shine chow. it up a little bit for you, Johnny. <laughs> Paul, gonna you shine it, it up. <laughs> So it reminds me a little bit. How about if you put it in stripper club? Oh, it's better, that's, right? that's where we got to yeah. put it next. Yeah, <laughs> I, did you do? It sounds a little bit like a western. It was. It's not you kind know? of. I mean, there's it's like the themes western. of the themes of loyalty, dependability, <laughs> like identity. Th those seem to be pretty important. Yeah, because if I don't trust him, and 
and believe on him. I cannot work with him. And this is my things until now. If I don't believe on you, you will never be my friend. Right. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. So same thing with Pete. And we met a lot of sources. And I saw him how he run the show, how he care. He's not like, ah, oh, Hajji, fuck them, this and that. No, he care. And he want to do the right things. And he's not corrupt. Like every time I look at to Pete now, and I saw him, he's not having fucking big companies. Like, if this guy is fucking corrupt in Iraq, he can make millions of dollars. Easily. <laughs> yeah. Easily. <laughs> changed my line of work. You know, so. I should say some of the things that Johnny said, talking, talking about a police checkpoint. Oh, we went to my cousin's house, too. That's true. Remember? Yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> At that time, when you stopped at a police checkpoint, and, you didn't know if they were really And my cousin, he is the governor of It Mosul. could be a hit sign. You know that? What's that? The Nofel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of my cousins, he is uh, the governor of Mosul now. Oh, nice. We yeah. should go see him. Yeah. I mean, maybe not tomorrow. But yeah, so it was a very dangerous time. And, yeah. and when Johnny shows up, when he says he needs weapons to go exact revenge, it's, this is in a time when it's absolutely a killing season outside of the camp. And even on the camp, they're attacking us all the time. So he comes to me, and I'm surprised to even see him alive. And if he needs money for a weapon to take care of something, he's fighting our fight. So, yeah, I got money. I also, I don't know if you remember this or not, but I went back to his contract company. And I said, this guy is not getting paid enough. He's working on a really high level. You need to give him a raise. Yep. And so they instantly oh, doubled his money. And it wasn't so much. much, but... You know, it's for a guy that, no, it's much. Yeah. And for what you were doing, it it wasn't it still wasn't enough. But. Like one hundred in that time, one hundred enough to support family. He raised it to five hundred. Yeah, and he's not in your movie. <laughs> no, <laughs> come on. You see his fucking belly. I don't. I don't need to be in it. Let me give Matt Damon to play him. Or something. Yeah, give Matt Damon. Yeah, yeah. But it was it was a special time and. He's part of the movie. I mean, there's no yeah. question about that. Yeah. It doesn't. You can't change the context to a modern context to this, like sitting by Target context, because it, it's not real. Yeah. No. You know, there, there were times when he would disappear because, and I told him, I said, "Don't, don't come work if it's too dangerous." Because at the time, at that time, him showing up might get him killed. Yeah. And whatever we were doing, we could find other things to do without needing him. And so when he would show up, we didn't know if he was compromised. Even it like the mob. And so we would have to see how he responded. There was trust, but we had to validate every time. And he always came through. He always brought us people that, that we never could have got to. So that it's a complex relationship. That so you weren't just a translator. You were also – he right. was also finding assets. And yeah, because he knew people. He knew a sure. lot of people. And you can't, you can't talk to good people to find out bad things. You've yep. got to talk to the worst people you can yep. find. And we have go code, like every time when we talk in the phone, if I am not to mention that, that's mean I get captured and people, they can uh, set you up for some reason somehow. So don't fucking say anything. If I don't but say that you don't that say code, my dog is feeling good no, today. Or right. No, we say Arabic word. Which one? Dipshi. Dipshi, yeah. yeah. Dipshi, what's that mean? Watermelon. <laughs> uh, but it's you, a word that you could use all dipshi, the time. Dipshi, dipshi. Dipshi, yeah. <laughs> And so we actually we, we keep that to this day when we still call each other yep. dipshi. And it's not the actual legitimate Arabic word, it's a regional word for yep. for it too. Oh, so if he doesn't say dipshi. If right. I if I say it, that's mean I'm captured. Oh uh, no, I did no. If I, I didn't it say word. it if I didn't say it, that's mean I'm captured and they can trick you somehow to see you up. So don't fucking do anything. If I say, hey, I want to meet you, wait me at the gate, or come to my cousin's house, don't do it. Was there ever a challenge to fit dips, Dipshi into the conversation? No. No. I, I can't think of water. Like, how do you just come up with the water watermelon? I eat watermelon yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> oh, he did it. And <laughs> there's a lot of watermelon up there. Like, oh, there is. It's thing. Yeah. a common thing. And we inject vodka yeah. and watermelon, too. <laughs> we did. Oh, he did that. Yeah, yeah, Panama yeah. City once. Yeah, it was good. I woke up on the beach. <laughs> it's always a good With night. birds pecking at my hair. Yes. And, yeah. and I, I did punch my friend That's why you face. have hat now? Yeah. <laughs> 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 to keep the birds away. Back, the to the dip sheet, oh, yeah. back to the dipshi, man. I'll go back to the dipshi. Six back. degrees of, of the dipshi. You met, so you met Pete before you started working with 
Dev Gru with that whole crowd of the, no, the I seal guys. No, I loved Dev that time. Yeah, he was the seals had him. Yeah, and then they were going to leave, and they didn't want to leave him unaccounted for. Okay, so what happened is seals they move Team Seven from Mosul to Baghdad for PSD, which is bodyguard for the VIP government, the Prime Minister, President, uh, Ministry, whatever, and. I cannot be with them because I don't have security clearance. So, and they kind of, they don't want to left me behind because I did a lot of good job with Team 7 and Team 2. So, they talked with Pete and I stayed with Pete. And one time I saw one of the language manager and he says, the team guys, they're looking for you. But I have no idea. So, I link up with Team 5. Brian Sargent, he's retired too, and start work with SEALs again, and we moved to Baghdad. Hey everybody, P.A. Turner from the Break It Down Show. I want to officially announce right now our relationship with Tactical16.com. Tactical16 is a bunch of warriors like me telling their stories, fiction, nonfiction, novels, screenplays, all kinds of things. I just want you to have on the top of your mind the name Tactical16.com. When did you first start learning English? I saw one interview, you said you was watch, watching movie, American movies. Yeah. So, I mean, everyone here have his own skills. Sure. Like you born, raised, you went to the school and you had fucking geography. She had math. She sure. Loved, I love English. Mm-hmm. Well, I had math. I'm good with it, but I had it. It's like, make me fucking mad every time when I count something, you know. So anyway, for the English, all the class on the school, if I failed, except the English, I succeed on it with good rate. And this has helped me when I start watching movie. Actually, when I play basketball, you have to watch Harlem team. You have to watch country cowboy movies, uh, country song, Kenny Roger, Lady, Lena Ritchie, whatever, you know, name it, John Wayne, all these kind of things. And if you don't notice that, you have your own teacher without you know. You're teaching yourself that language without you know. Were you learning those songs not even knowing what they meant? Yeah. Like a devil goes down to Georgia? You just make those yeah. sounds and not really yeah. know what it was? Oh, like sure. I remember Lady, Kenny Roger. Yeah. I just write it down in Arabic. The sounds in Arabic. And I start memorize it. A lot of those songs, it's funny that you brought in Lionel Richie because Lionel Richie wrote songs for Kenny Rogers. And Lady absolutely has got to be. Gamble is good too. Yeah, Gamble yeah. is good too. When you made that decision to move your family, a lot of interpreters do it where they go first. But you guys went as a group. Did yeah. you? Yeah. So how did Me you and pull my that off? You know, SEALs, they never have had that situation, which is responsible for what term to move them to the United States. Okay. So they had a lot of wrong gait to have the right answer until they, by an accident, they, in San Diego, they met lawyer, his name George, immigration lawyer, and he made the process so fast. Uh, that's why when we moved in 2009, me and my family. Did you have a choice of who to work for? I mean, I know that, that there were, I mean, back then, I mean, there was Blackwater, there was Triple K, there was all kinds of contracting yeah. companies. Did you have a choice of where to work? I mean, would, yeah. a, would a contracting company have paid yeah. more than working for yeah. DOD? Yeah, but... And what are the differences? But like you, yeah. I'm going to tell you mission, and I'm going to tell you what, what happened after that. Cool. So we have mission with Delta, team and ranger. So big-ass mosque in Baghdad, the biggest one. So the plan is ranger surround the mosque for security. We clear the building, seals inside the mosque. And Delta, they question the people inside the mosque to find the jackpot. So we clear the building, everything good to go from our side. We send all the mails to them. And at that time, I'm smoking. And I'm smoking, and it's like fucking... And during the day, it's like we spend 10, 15 minutes after we send the guys to them, and there is no answer from them if they found the jackpot or not. And you know, this is not something we used to do it, mission during the day. All our mission during the night. 
So it kind of makes me confused because we're going to be easy, stupid target to anyone. If you have mortars, RBG, ID, car bombs. So this is bring us about your point about the loyalty. So anyway, so I told the chief, I told him, hey, buddy, what the fuck is going on? He says, they tried to find the jackpot. Told them, all right. Tell him, tell them, Johnny Walker, he will find it within 10, 15 minutes. And one condition, I run the show. They want the jackpot, I will give them the jackpot. But how I deal it, none of this, those guys' business. Okay, he passed the information and dealt a guy, he says, send him. That's pretty open-minded, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Some guy named Johnny Walker says, give me the job. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. So I went there, and they supposedly to see, like, fucking nerd turp right. with body armor and stupid helmet. I went there, and they found fucking a teen guy. My M4, my MP5 as a pistol, body armor, radio, helmet, everything. So it was like, what is Johnny Walker? I thought, I'm fucking Johnny Walker. Oh, okay. Seal's treating you good. So, all right, yeah. And what was your uniform? What did it look like? What same did you thing. wear? Same like you, Seals. You used just like a Seal. Same weapon, same everything, you know. Yeah. I am the only third in all the world who can put the trident in his chest. You know, the Seals trident. Yeah. And I carry weapon with them. They had some terrible uniforms for the other interpreters, <laughs> too. That's a terrible shade of green, too, whatever they were wearing. It, not the only Terp. You're the only person who's not graduated from Buds who can put yeah. a trident on their chest. Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. That's big deal. Yeah. Big enough. So, anyway, so we, I got, I told them, where's the males? They told me over there. So, I told them, all right. So, I took a few team guys. So, I told them, hey, so there's building, and we line up those males in front of the building. I came and I told them, hey guys, I want to apologize. I present the Iraqi Special Forces. Oh, and sneaky I, yeah. Sneaky, sneaky Johnny I Walker. I present the Iraqi government. Right? And I just want to, I play kind of psychology game with them. I want to apologize for what we did. But we are not came and hit the target, the mask, without information. And the formation they give us, they says you can find car pumps and insurgent from Shishini, from everywhere, from fighter. And, you know, when I, if I came to your church or mosque or whatever, and you are a bad guy, but there is no car pumps or anything inside the mosque. And I'm telling you, this is the information they told us, car pumps, insurgent, foreign fighter, and there's nothing. This make you feel quiet, comfortable, right? That they haven't found it yet. Because we couldn't find it. There's nothing. Yeah. So give him kind of comfortable feeling. And oh, I told yeah. him, everyone, I'm going to call his name. I want him to step to the front to me. Can I give him ID? You know, the SSC back. Can I give him ID and a hand of his box? I apologize from American government to you guys. So I called one guy, two guys, three guys, and kissed them, you know, apologized to them, give them money, go behind the building, and there are seals, I told you, behind the building, they catch them. They are not going to go anywhere. Because in case, if I miss someone, I don't want him to go anywhere. You know what I mean? So after five, six names, I call Abu Sajjad, which is mean Sajjad's father. Abu Sajjad, okay. Yeah. What, do you have kids? Yeah. What's your kid's name? Sherry. Sherry. Sherry's father. Abu Sherry. Abu Sherry. So, Abu Sherry. So, body language. He moved one step and he head back. And they let one guy behind them to watch the hand, how's, right. you know, the body language. And one guy in front to watch the faces. So, when this guy, he moved one step and he's kind of give you his head back to the same spot. I went to him and I told him, how are you, Mr. Jad? So I pass it, jackpot, jackpot. So when I pass it, the Delta forces, they just observe everything. And they say, holy shit, we want this guy. <laughs> so anyway, we yeah, head back. Up. Yeah, and we head back. So can I stop you for a sec? Yeah. So that was like a t kind of a tell that you picked out. It was just a, this is your understanding of psychology and body language that he, he stepped back when you walked up to him? He stepped one 
one step to the front and head back to the, his position. Right. This is a, this is when you when you're facing him. So, I'm facing everyone. Right. And I'm calling random names. Right. Like oh. on the line, like twenty guys. I'm calling Abu Sheri, Pete. You know what I mean? And after five, six names, when I like shake the hand, apologize to everyone, send him to the behind the building. It looks like I'm releasing him from the gate. I call that guy name. Okay. And he denied his name, Abu Sajjad. When they ask everyone, are you Abu Sajjad? Are you Abu Sajjad? All of them, they are denied. But I, after I give him comfortable feeling, when I told him there's car bombs and we found nothing, this and that. And oh, the by stuff. the way, Azerbaijan. <laughs> and then he takes the step, right? Right. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So he make one step to the front. So I told him, all right, jackpot. So the guys, they says, we want Johnny Walker with us. We have seven terms. We will give you all the terms. But we want Johnny Walker. And, you know, Delta Force, they have access to everything. They want something, they, they took it. So when we head back to the cab, the guys, they came and they says, Johnny, you want to go home? Hmm. Fuck yeah. They're all right. Well, I don't have money. They say, okay, we give you money. It's like, hold on. Fuck it. I'm going home. Shit. So they give me money and they went there. I spent two weeks to three weeks when I head back. What happened is Delta Force, they want me to work with them. And the SEALs, they says, he's he's not American citizen, he's Iraqi. And he resigned from the job and he disappeared. And this happened with me a lot. With every unit we work, they offer to me to work with them and they refuse. And I keep work with SEALs. With the SEALs. They'd send you on a vacation? Just to hide me. We can't find him. Just, Just to hide, hide you? Yeah. But he was, he was great at Getting at the thing. So one of the things we do poorly as Americans with interpreters is we don't create trust with them and allow him to do what he can do already. He knows his people. You know, like you go to upstate New York, you know your people. And I can't out upstate New York, New York you, you know, but we always think we can out Iraq and Iraqi. And that's one of the differences is when you get someone who's clever like Johnny who has earned trust, it's easier to let him tell you how he's going to accomplish your mission with you, you know, you talk it out ahead of time, at least I like to do that and and he'll deliver a jackpot, he'll deliver uh, an evil person, he'll deliver whatever that thing is he has that ability to go out and convince people, he, he, and good people too, like let's let's get through this situation go negotiate a price and he goes out and he, he does these things it's a, it's a knack that he has so maybe you don't like math, but you're good at talking to people, yeah <laughs> I mean, if you look at the big picture, your country is it's going to be destroyed by those guys. You will do everything to find the bad guys. You know what I mean? We are not talking about fucking gang guy. We're talking about someone he will kill your kids in front of you. Yeah. Right. So, like I said, we catch a lot of bad guys, but we catch innocent people too. Yeah. And honestly, the thing I... So with all the racism bullshit now, still they are, they don't give a shit. The Jack Party is fucking Muslim or Christian. He's fucking bad. He's bad. Let me ask you this: This is a current events question. So the U.S. has agreed to move their uh, embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. How does that impact you? Why is it going to impact me? I don't know. Everybody seems to think it's a big deal. So when you ask me, you think it's going to impact me. I, so I'm I want to know why. Your, I want to. I want to know your opinion because you're someone from the Arab world, someone from the Muslim world. But why you think it's going to impact? Me? I don't think it's going to impact you. Okay, it's not. But I. But I want to know like oh. why your peers maybe. Well, he didn't ask me that question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, so, if people have made it to be a big deal. There's already so much conflict and strife in the Middle East. So if we have argument in religion, okay. in Bible, right. As, like you guys as a Christian. Who's going to be the judge? The people, right? Yeah. So, in Quran, God says to the Jewish people, go to your land, promised land. Yeah. So, this land is belong to them. Right. So, if he moves from Tel Aviv to Ashalim, from whatever to whatever, this land is belong to Ashalim. So, why I'm, can I, why is going to impact me when God promised them? This is why I asked the question, because I knew you'd have a great I'm answer. I'm not going to fucking be against God yeah. to make fucking some people feel good. No. This is what God says. 
this land for the promised people. Yeah. Unless God says something else, I will be in pact. If right. it's not, I'm with God's decision. Easy and simple. I'm with God's position. Decision. Like yeah. Oh, decision. Yeah. Okay. Position. So this is pro- this is uh, this this used to, people used to argue about this one a while, but it's gone away for a little bit. But do you do you think that I could be getting myself in trouble for just you know what I also noticed? He's a good interpreter because he also he clocks why you're asking the question. Yes. Before he even probably translates it to somebody else, you know, yeah. which, which I imagine can be useful, you know. It has to be that that particular skill because he wants to know where you're going. It's not just a literal translation. Like a lot of the times I would tell interpreters and they would typically forget. I would say, I'm going to ask a dumb question that you know I know the answer to, but I'm doing it for a reason. So I want you to ask the question. So Why are you asking this stupid question? Right, right? exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and Johnny never had a problem with that. He understood, ah. You're trying to go in the side door. So I would say, explain Ramadan to me. Why is it that you have to eat more then? And it's obviously a wrong thing because you're supposed to fast. And so the interpreter would look at me like, Pete, you know this. And I'd be like, yeah, I know. I know this. You have to shut the fucking But mouth, Johnny would go, I see what you're getting at. And then he would ask the question. And I would, for the most part, shut up. Because now that he knows where I'm trying to get to, I can let my dog hunt. He's like, I'm going to go get this. And he goes off and, and I'm just waiting for him to give me something to work off of next. You know? Oh, yeah. What's okay. your other question? The, qu- the question was, was um, I mean, you basically seen, you know, your town, Mos- Mosul, overrun by, by ISIS, who are, you know, they're extremists and they're using the Muslim religion. The question. Well, the, the question is, is, is Islam, right? Is it inherently more violent than other and compared to other religions i'm can ask i'm gonna answer you very simple i mean i know you know very simple crusades aside yeah, that was no, like fucking simple. Horrible. yeah first of all i'm not a big fan of religion sure i respect all the religion include mine yeah. as a muslim but i'm not a big fan of religion i'm not gonna fight for god because if god fucking special need i'm not, I'm not gonna fucking fight for him <laughs> it's called god's special needs yeah. that's great Second things, because we don't know. <laughs> second, second things for uh, the answer for your question: Why United States support the Muslim in 1980, Taliban, uh, Mujahideen, and give him the anti-helicopter, SA sevens, and all that stuff? Yeah. So my point is, why there is no Islam and violent all this bullshit things before 1990? I, I, well, look my, at, my answer? Look at to the history. My answer that? Look at to the history. Before 1990, you live in the United States, right? Yeah. Do you hear anything in social media, whatever, Muslim, Osama Bin Laden, Qaeda, Kavdanik, all the bullshit? Nothing. No. Yeah. Right? Well, there, we did have a problem with well, Sh- not Shia right Muslims. Now. Well, yeah, but, but in Iran, they took a bunch of people. And that stemmed partly to like a revolutionary change and everything. But, I mean, there was problems before that for us. But the, not disaster. Okay, not disaster. We, we talk now is unbelievable things happen. Okay. Savages, ISS, Qaeda. You know what I mean? Like before, yeah, we have a problem. We have a problem between fucking white American and black American, right? Right. We, be, between fucking Catholic and protest. It's few here and there. You know what I mean? But after 1990, everything getting changed. Well, I mean, you're, you're talking about like the Afghanistan war. We yeah. gave money to the Mujahideen. Yeah. Well, I think that that was. I think I think Americans have always been deeply. Every war has had like a kind of religious undertone in some ways. If you look at, it, they might say, "Oh, back then it was just an ideological confrontation between, you know." capitalist free democracy versus communism right. but i think one of the things that really drove us against communism and got a lot of americans to support is the communist the idea that the communists don't believe in god that they were godless so i think at the time we probably at the time it was we would pretty much do anything to to stop soviet expansion but and to but contain the them. same same russian government in world war ii united states support them to a point we, we support partners, the but- communist to in Russia, point. because because it was like a game of walk. It's like a game I'm of whack a mole. I'm not. <laughs> it's like I'm the not, Nazis are worse. Yes, <laughs> the communists are worse. Oh God damn! Here come the Muslims. <laughs> it's like, right? So it's just like whacking one at, after the look other. Look at to the history. Yeah. If you look at to the history with bigger vision, 
you will find out all this, what is going on now, is not about Islam or Christian. Right. It's about agenda and ideologies and people. They, like Russia, why Russia involved in Syria now and support Iran? They want to take, they want to take advantage of the instability and have more influence in the region. And oil and gas. Right. Right? So it's, it's a game. And by the way, I'm not saying our holy book, Quran, is very peaceful. No, they say kill the infidels, do this and that. But my question is, why before 1990 or 1980, there's nothing such as terrorist Muslim and the, stab, the Islam established a thousand years ago? Why just show up right now? I think it was building up with like the PLO and Yasser Arafat. Makes sense. I'm just, I'm just wondering. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's all if you look at it in context. Why are the, why are these big issues now? Why are people, why and, are people and, so interested in, you know? And this is the problem now. The problem is now with a lot of Muslim living in the United States. And let me clear with that. I am against anyone want to harm harm anything in this country. I'm against him. Right. But also, I am against people hate Muslim just because they are Muslim. Because what do you do? You're going to push those people that says, you came from Iraq, you run away from ISS, from militia, from corrupt government, and you work with American and you came here and you just want to live peaceful. That's all what you need. You came here and PT came to you, white guy, and oh, fuck Muslim. It's going to hurt you, right? Yeah. You did nothing bad, but it's going to hurt you. You are fucking yeah. Muslim. And another one, oh, you guys, the only things you know is fucking cut neck people. And do this and that. Bullshit, 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 right? So where is this guy's going to go? It's going to go to the fucking extremists. So it's a very sensitive time. We need to fucking welcome the Muslim in our communities. We need to let him live with us as a human being. And we it's not right to value people by what kind of religion he has. We should value him as if he is positive in the community or not. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Like right now, and I say that before, if this country under attack by, you know, the holy place for Muslim is Saudi, right? Because Mecca and Medina. Right. Because we have the, our prophet grave, right? And his mosque. So if this country under attack by Saudi, I will carry my fucking weapon and I will go to Saudi and kill anyone who's fucking think to attack this country. Right. So I'm going to be with you you are a Christian against those Muslims. So that mean I'm good Muslim now or I'm good American? Also, if you would attack the Saudis, does it make you a good... If Saudi Arabia, for example, right. attack this country for no reason, right? and I carry my weapon and volunteer to the army and tr- start fight the Saudi, does that make me good Muslim or good Americans? Well, I think I don't think it makes you either because neither of us really have to like americans have a choice of whether or not to fight to fight back we've got a volunteer army if, it's we, not like, if we have to fight if, if you have to fight if every american he have to fight back to yeah. protect his country yeah. and i volunteer to fight it's a dilemma Does that make me most good muslim or good american it's it's a dilemma it's make me good american you know why because country is bigger than religion. And that's why this country succeeds. The nation states. Yep. Not valued by religion. Valued by your loyalty to this country. It's funny. I talked to a guy. He's, uh, he's, Israel, he's, he's Jewish. And he grew up in Miami. And American Jews have the opportunity to enlist in the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, if they want to. And this kid, this kid did that. And he fought on the side of the Israelis. He was injured at... You know, his army amputated and wrote a memoir about it. It's really good. What would you say? What would you say to him? I'm going to ask him, United States under attack from Israel. Are you going to carry your weapon against Israel or not? Right. Pretty safe bet that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> yeah. If, with $4 billion a year in if, aid. <laughs> I I says, no, you ask me and I says if. Right. If. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Saudi so will never attack Americans. Yeah. As a government, royal government. You, you know yeah. what I mean? But we say if, just to show up, to prove my point is, because 
If you live in this country, you have to love this country. To have to loyal to this country, you have to defend and protect this country. But if you want to believe about fucking be a Jewish, go ahead. If you want to believe about this rock to be your God, go ahead. But don't force me to believe what you believe. Yeah. So we are, we have different belief, but what's gathered us is loyalty of this country, love of this country. First off, I want to say this. We're talking to Johnny Walker, and if you don't already have a copy of Codename Johnny Walker, you must get it. You can find it easily on Facebook. On Amazon? It's on Amazon, absolutely. You're sort of hard to track on, on uh, Twitter and Facebook. You've got different names. So I told just, you because I'm so stupid with I, Twitter. I was trying I to save you no, from that. <laughs> I have no fucking idea. Like, uh, sometime I'm trying, especially when I'm kind of start drinking yeah have a few shots and we're get gonna buzzed. cut all this stuff out let me just say this for you <laughs> so he's a little hard to track on social media so if you want to get a hold of him get a hold of me at pda turner and i will link you to johnny he does that for safety reasons so that he can uh yes it's called code name johnny walker for a reason because you've done some crazy ass shit you got to stay safe but, but i think it's a good idea to have like one regular twitter account and then to have one drunk twitter account <laughs> right <laughs> you, know, you have like one account you only it's like, no, I, mean, I got to yeah. shift over to my other account. Bro, I can understand like Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, all yeah. this kind of shit, LinkedIn, whatever. But I cannot understand Twitter. I'm going to take care of you on that. I'm going to help you out. Oh, okay. Thank you. So, And then you have a new movie. It's going to go into March. production in March. Supposedly. Yeah. Supposedly. Making movies is hard, as we all know. And we're all looking forward to that. It's based on the book, Codename Johnny Walker. One of the things I love about you is that uh, you're not quite full on legit sworn in American yet, but that day is fast approaching. And when it does, I'm going to be proud to stand next to you. I always call you the greatest American, and I know because you. you've literally been a dead man so many times over and over again. You fought I for your country. <laughs> <laughs> you fought for your country. You fought with us, and and now you're part of us. And, and I think that's the ultimate American story. And what you're not worried about is what the country isn't or what the country could be. You're saying right now, today, this is a great country. And you've come from, you've left your homeland to come here. We often, as Americans who are fortunate enough to be born here, lose sight of of what that is. And we want to prove our point to somebody else. But in reality, we're very fortunate to be able to even have those conversations and sit by a Target and a Starbucks and have a conversation about religion, about politics, about war, Uh, and 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 not be angry. This is what's make this country strong. Believe what you believe, and but don't fucking harm people around you. Yeah, you know what I mean. I met a lot of people like Muslim, Christian, Jewish. My agent, my uh, partner, he's a Jewish guy. Yeah, he's an amazing guy, and I, I never have a problem with people religion, but I have problem with people loyalty. Like, let me tell you something. What does that mean to you? You live in this fucking country. You work in this country. You take money from this country, and you don't. You don't fucking raise American flag. Something simple. Or you fucking hang your country flag in your car. So if you love this your country so much, go back to your country. This is one of the point. I don't mind to love your country. I love Iraq too. But this has become my country for good. Yeah. Because welcome my kids, my wife. My wife, she's at the college now. My kids, everyone have his own dream. We have a house. We have plenty of food, and we have our dream. People respect us. And from 2009 until now, maybe I met one or two stupid races. Yeah. Imagine wow. if you That's <laughs> if you or you went to Iraq. Do you think we can sit in Baghdad now and we talk about Muslim? They will fucking sell you an auction. Yeah. An ISS auction. <laughs> they'll sell hits you can hit pete for a dollar <laughs> right start selling right. Auction, sell it yeah. action yeah. is open so my point is it's fucking a great country yeah you fucking stay five years and you get citizenship and you can go to vote same like pete who live his and family for a ha- for a hundred years in this country yeah you're equal to him yeah you right. go to the mosque no one stop you no one will stop you you convert to Muslim, no one stop you. You convert to Christian, you, no one will stop you. You became gay, no one will stop you. You became fucking whatever. Yeah. So what else? Go to UAE. 
mm-hmm. Arabic Emirates. You will never be fucking Emirates citizen. Never. And you are Muslim and Arabic. Can't own property. Cannot. Mm-hmm. In one condition. You have to share this property with UAE Fif- citizen. Yeah. 51. 50, 50. Yeah. 51. 51. For him. 49 for you. Right. And we call it fucking racist. <laughs> And being all practical, who's, who's fucking who's fucking bring all the fucking Muslim from Syria and Iraq? Right. United States, yeah, not Saudi, not fucking make him live in this country. I got a question for you. You suddenly interact like knowing your tribe is part of your identity and knowing your lineage. Do you think Americans have a version of that? I mean, it might necess- not necessarily. It might not be like you know, family, father's father's father. But do you? What do you recognize as tribes in? for Americans, just so the, from your perspective. Yeah. The different tribe is in the United States, like SEALs. That right. tribe. Right. Like right now, if I need any help, I can just like text any SEALs. He will come right away. There's one actually right over there in that <laughs> push. <laughs> he's he's well, pointing she, something at I, me. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, <laughs> let me tell you about SEALs and tribe. Yeah. Because you ask about the tribe. There's no tribe like your family tribe, but there is... Sure. Brotherhood tribe, right. which is the most effective, positive relationship because it's gathered everyone, different blood, different religion, different race, and brotherhood community. So when I came here, I have Chris Good, he's master chief somewhere. He paid the electricity bill. Every month. Tuition, he paid Cox. Another guy, JT. He brought Honda Accord 1991, almost brand new, and he gave it to me as a gift. And all of them, they are Christian and Muslim. See how much they are racist. Yeah. Johnny Heil, wife, Susie, she took my family, my wife, to Casco. And she bought for 3000 or $4,000. And they are Christian and they are Muslim. They are racist. And my own country, my own people, Muslim people right now, in the United States, they call me traitor and savage. Iraqis in the United States. Yeah. yeah. They call me traitor and savage. What's that feel like? I feel good. Because that means I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> because if I pissed off some Muslim, yeah, that means I'm in the right to truck. That's true, man. You're out there and you're doing it. You're living. You're living well. You're looking great. By oh, the way. thank you. Yeah. Except yeah, you're not as fat as, as Pete. You're not as fat as me, but not as not as fat as Pete. <laughs> you see all the money. <laughs> Pete, you're losing weight, though, aren't you? I, I've been I've been slimming down. My girlfriend's got me paying more attention. I'm taking better care of myself in general. You know, all this yeah. PTSD stuff we get to deal with after the fight, it wrecks you, man. It makes you not want to yeah. take Does that bother you guys a little bit? And we're basically sitting here in the middle of a coffee shop in the middle of a main That's street. That's why I'm facing the park, not right? the car behind me. Yeah. yeah. We have that doesn't problem. bother me. It's the other stuff that bothers me. But it for sure, it's something to think about. Yeah. I don't know. The fucking PTSD is like fucking something I never think about it. Oh, I just fucking face the PTSD with fucking American Dream. Yeah. And enjoy my life every day and think about, fuck it, can it be fucking PTSD game or Johnny Walker game? It's like war, you know? Challenge between you and PTSD. PTSD, what is going to happen? Fucking wake up in the fucking middle of the night, remember one of the guy you killed, his face? Yeah. So, you are not the only one or the last one who's going to fucking remember this shit. That's true. So, fucking live your life and move on. Don't be fucking pussy or... Pick up another job or stop fucking complaining and live your life, you know? It's fascinating. You said you worked at Fort Irwin. I was just wondering if you could say what you do there. I mean, it seems like you have a lot of knowledge that could be useful with either, you know, American operators or, or interrogators or um, or anyone interested in under, understanding the opposing forces. So, I guess, basically, what are you doing now? I do everything to make my customer. So, you're a consultant right now. You're a teacher. Yeah. I'm not fucking big acting, but like I told you, same thing, same deal with the SEALs when I work with them. I will do everything guys they can be survived when they go overseas. I noticed when I was just doing the short amount of time I spent some time doing the reenactments, whatever it is, that there were guys that had come back that were working as civilians for consulting companies and they were pretending to be special operations forces. And then they would meet, maybe they would have an argument with their Iraq, they'd set up They'd st- stage an ar- argument with an Iraqi at the town well or something like that, or even like an attack on a um, you know attack on like a little outpost or something. They had some rules where you had to keep the weapon back, like you couldn't fire your weapon within yeah. eight feet, or else you'd have that kind of 
flash from the did you do you notice any of that like do you notice any of that kind of kind of playing out at all in those in those scenarios that are reenacted i mean this is going to take us maybe long long time to to talk about each things about like scenario what the best scenario for those guys let's what do the, another could you do another session sometime yeah, to talk about it yeah if, yeah. You, if you guys Always. want more than i'd love to talk about that because i yeah. thought it was because i thought it would be an interesting way for some of these guys to deal with some of this stuff that they had but as iraqis they were just what the fuck yeah, <laughs> the yeah. Fuck? you know like for me i would love to see everyone when he worked in fort irwin or any camp navy marine army camp I want him to start feel he loved this job because when he start feeling he loved this job, he will give everything he have. But if he feel his can it be only job to pay his bills, one we can uh, kill the creative thing inside him. So maybe when you have time, another time we will talk in all the details, what I think, what we should do, this and that. And if you want, I can invite one of my good friends, his name Kevin Gray. And he will cover on other details too. I'd love to talk to you about that. Yeah. yeah. I would love to write the scenarios for Fargo when you and I could sit down. Just, I, I don't know how much you know about this, Mark, but if you see two Iraqi men on the street talking, it's going to be excited. It's going to be passionate. There's going to sound, it's going to sound like an argument. And it might be just short of an argument. But if you don't know this going in and you see it, you think, oh, there's a fight about to happen. And the other thing too, there's a lot of hierarchical, like, face slapping especially like if it's a rocky military to a lower ranking guy you might see the hand come out and a smack that's not our business at all that's a rocky business those arguments those conversations at the chai shop that's not our but we'll think that there is something a conflict that needs like our involvement i would love to write scenarios like that where there's yeah, actually these, these things and you you get to read and go that's not for me that's there's nothing for me to do they're not even mad at each other they're best friends but they're having those those kind of conversations that friends can have. So the good things I work with company is, yeah, they are so be. helpful to any idea, and they will support you. So if you guys want to talk more, let me know. Just in advance time, we can meet in one t- one place, me, you guys, and and we will talk about a lot of things. Sure, I'm interested from a fictional perspective as well. I mean, just back. While we were waiting for different missions, there were two tables. There was one table where everybody's playing a humanity game with cards and laughing. And the other table is we'd all eat together, but the Iraqis always sit at a different table. You're playing dominoes. Yeah. Yelling at each other. A little more volleyball with each other. Yeah. Like yep. Always putting each other down. That's where I learned a thousand dicks in your ass. <laughs> I'm going to have to learn that again. Do you but, like this story? I don't know. From thousand story, you, li- you like the... 1,000 dick in your ass. I don't know why. I don't know. <laughs> I like to say it to people. <laughs> yeah. Johnny Walker, codename Johnny Walker on Facebook, codename Johnny Walker. Really on Twitter, they can find you. You just can't find you. Uh, you're all over the place. The movie's coming out. The book, it really, I don't know if you've read the book, Mark, but the book is fantastic. You never get to see the Iraqi interpreters escape your participation what gets you to be able to wear a fucking trident on your chest if you choose to i know that right? that's that yeah. fucking big on us. it's it's an, an incredible tale so you guys really ought to go out and support that support my friend johnny walker because he's a beautiful Thank man you. and i love seeing you living and thriving because we have both seen each other at the hardest points yep. of life yep. he's a fucking great american exactly right <laughs> i mean this is what you aspire to is is to get to a place where you don't even know how you survive and now here you you are thriving in America, and goddamn, I love it, and I always want to talk to you, bro. This is like I don't know, like my dream became reality. Yeah, to live in this country, and that's why every time when I woke up, I said, "Thank God for what I have." Don't get me wrong; I don't have fucking palace, small house, but this is small house, like fucking compare in Iraq. If I have ten palaces compared to this small house, this small house mean a lot to me. So. Life is so good. And in those 10 palaces in Iraq, you'd have to have a picture of Saddam Hussein on the wall. Right. To keep yourself from getting well, in trouble. Now, before Saddam Hussein, <laughs> now you have to put thousand corrupt yeah. government members to save your ass. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, so, there's like eight pictures on the wall or something. Yeah. Now. <laughs> so one thing, one thing before we finish this interview or whatever you call it. Every one thing, the biggest threat came from ISIS in Iraq. 
specifically in Iraq? So my answer is no, it's wrong. The biggest threat came from uneducated people and corrupt government. And now, whatever he's fucking have the decision in his hand in American politics, people, he should think seriously about what is going to happen if we leave Iraq as it is now yeah. after 10 years. We're going to face some serious shit. We have to finish the corrupt. We have to start educate people, kids. That's going to take more than 10 years. Every time when you start like big things, it's going to start with the first step. Yeah. That's Better cool. than you go back fucking five steps like what happened now in Iraq. Yeah. Because what happened now, they corrupt and they make it legal. Like before, in our tradition, if you bribe, it's shameful to mention that in front of your kids because you don't want to teach your kids that shit. Now, you are so proud to tell your kids, hey, I make money from bribing money. So this is destroyed our minors. Yeah. The big enemy now is uneducated people and corrupt government everywhere in Iraq.